Some people with disability might display behaviours that are of concern. Behaviours of concern might include aggression towards others, self-harm or destruction of property. In order to address these behaviours and reduce the risk of harm to themselves or others, behaviour support strategies may be needed. In some cases, these strategies might infringe on or restrict the human rights of a person with disability. When they do, they are called restrictive practices. These practices can include the following. Chemical restraint, mechanical restraint, environmental restraint, physical restraint and seclusion. In New South Wales, restrictive practices should only be used in the context of a behaviour support plan and based on a functional assessment of behaviour. Under New South Wales Government policy, the use of restrictive practices with NDIS participants must be authorised by a Restrictive Practices Authorisation Panel, also known as an RPA panel. Restrictive practices can only be approved for particular service settings and under clearly defined circumstances. In the following scenario, Joe, who is a team leader with an NDIS service provider, is informing NDIS participant Jessica that a Restrictive Practices Authorisation submission has been made to a Restrictive Practice Authorisation Panel for the request of an environmental restraint and chemical restraint following multiple choking episodes and aggressive behaviour. Joe is concerned for the safety and well-being of Jessica due to these incidents. Did Peter, the behaviour practitioner, come and meet with you a couple of weeks ago? Yes, he did. He seems like a nice person. Yeah, he came and spoke to me as well. Remember the time you went into hospital after you choked on some food? Yeah, that was bad. I was pretty scared. Yeah, it was pretty scary for us too. We were really worried about you. Since then, we've also had some other incidents where you've nearly choked on food, maybe half a dozen, and we're really concerned about that. Remember the speech pathologist came and she's helping us to make, for you to make some better choices around the food so we, you don't choke? Other service providers in Jessica's support team will attempt to address any concerns and develop strategies to assist with overcoming them before the need for restrictive practices are considered. I just want to eat whatever I want. Yes, I understand that, but we need to keep you safe and prevent you from choking. So we need to make sure that you only eat the food that the speech therapist advised us to eat and that we can um, keep you safe by providing access to that food. And I know that makes you really angry and sometimes you throw things. I want to make the right choices, but I sometimes forget. And I don't like getting angry at staff either. Peter's um, recommended locking the fridge and the cupboards of the food so to keep you safe. Recommendations of any specific restrictive practices will be based on a functional behaviour assessment carried out by a behaviour support practitioner. The assessment will also consider any well-being concerns of the person or those involved in their support. Do you think that's a good idea? Well, yeah, I do think it's a good idea if it means that we're going to stop you choking. Also, Peter wrote about some medication to be given when you're upset to help you calm down. Really? So what we're talking about is the locking of the fridge and the cupboards and taking medication when you're upset. They're called restrictive practices and they can't happen without approval. And it has to be approved by a panel. At this panel, we discuss everything about you and how these practices may impact on you. And then we look at ways of trying to uh, use other strategies so we don't need to use those practices. The panel's decision to authorise use of restrictive practices will be based on consent and key supporting documentation, including a behaviour support plan, as well as documentation from other key services in Jessica's support team, such as a speech pathologist, medical practitioner and key worker. Would you like to come to the panel? No, you go. We'll talk later, but thank you. So the panel's on this afternoon, so next time we meet, I'll let you know what they decided. Okay. Hi Joe. welcome to the RPA panel today. 
Uh, you're here, I think, for Jessica's submission today, is that right? Yes, yes. Um, now, we'll do some introductions to start. Um, so we have here Cindy, who's from DCJ. She's our independent Hello. specialist. Hi, Cindy. Um, I've taken the liberty of calling Peter, who's the behaviour practitioner. He should be on the phone. Yeah, hi, everyone. Hi, Peter. Hi. And you have myself, of course, as the convener, um, one of the line managers here at the agency. Um, would you like to start the application or the, the hearing today by having a bit of a chat about what Jessica's like to support day to day, give us a sense of the application and why you're here today? In order for the panel to make a reasoned decision, they would discuss the submission with other key services in Jessica's support team to understand the many perspectives of the situation. Okay. So, yes, Jessica's been with us for a few years um, and she's a lovely young lady. Um, she um, really has good involvement with her mum. Her mum's involved with her life. Um, she has a public guardian. And um, we're really pleased some of her NDIS goals have been um, they're starting to take place. So she's going on a holiday soon. And we've also been successful in getting her to go to a local social club. So um, she's pretty happy at the moment. She's a pleasure to work with. Um, however, we've come today because <clears throat> we've had a few incidents um, around food and we're very concerned about that. Um, so we're applying for uh, environmental restraint today and that's because we've had um, about six incidents of Jessica eating um, food when we're, there's no staff around. Can you give me a sense of just how unwell she became in some of those incidents? She ended up in hospital for one incident because um, of choking and just recently as we've tried to stop her accessing the food that the speech pathologist has told us is a high risk, she's getting really upset and she starts to throw things. Um, which is quite out of character for Jessica. Peter, have you got anything to add about the application? In my role as Jessica's behaviour support practitioner, I've encouraged Jessica's support team, talk with Jessica about her food choices, and when she can't eat what she wants, uh, then offering some uh, alternative choices. But it's also okay to get upset, uh, but it's not okay to shout, scare people or throw things. Um, have you tried other things, Joe, with uh, mealtime management strategies or to help manage the frustration? Um, okay, so we did. We've tried showing her photos of good choices. However, she accesses the food when we're not around. So that hasn't proven very successful in helping and make a better choice. Um, we've also tried to um, explain to her what the speech pathologist is saying in her report. It needs to let you know, it really upsets her when she has an incident to, yeah. You might see in the application today, we've also put a PRN protocol in um, to try and help her not get so upset. What I'm hearing so far is there's a lot of information around risk for the choking, but not quite as much around the aggressive stuff that the PRN's in place for. So Joe, can you tell me how Jessica feels about all of this? Uh, I spoke to her today and she knows why we've come to the panel and she, she understands the choking did cause her to go to hospital. Um, however, she still feels she wants the food. So she was asking how long this restriction may be in place. Um, I talked to her about getting upset and getting some medication for her. Uh, she didn't really uh, comment on that. I also noticed consent hasn't been provided yet. Oh, I rang the public guardian this week to let them know we we're going to the panel. Um, the public guardian does have the function for restricted practices. Uh, Mum has function for medical. So um, the public guardian said they weren't willing to provide consent until they saw the outcome of the panel. Um, Peter's put in his plan some fading options and we think we can safely implement them. So we'd like to only lock the cupboards when Jessica's around, so it doesn't impact on the other residents. Uh, and we'd also, we'd like to move towards having them unlocked uh, when staff can supervise her closely around food. Uh, we're also thinking about getting her to make some snacks with the staff so that she can learn about what's a high risk food and what's a low risk food and basically be more independent in, in these risks. Um, just to clarify for me, Joe. Do you think there's any capacity to work perhaps with the speech pathologist around identifying 
high risk and low risk foods? Does it have to be all the cupboard or could it be just some? Okay, so yeah, we could certainly consider access to low risk foods. Yeah, I, I'm sure we can do that, yep. Is that something, Peter, that you think you can incorporate in the plan in conjunction with the speech pathologist? Yeah, I think so, Ben. It's an important part of the skill building and I can work with Joe and, and the support team to do that. Um, I think from today we would um, perhaps progress with the um, environmental restraint in terms of locking the cupboards, um, but I don't think we're quite ready to look at the PRN or the chemical restraint. I think we'd need some more evidence around that. The panel also requires the behaviour support plan to clearly state when and under what conditions the restrictive practice can be used, that there is data to demonstrate the need for a restrictive practice, that the proposed strategy is the least restrictive option. The panel will also need to be assured that staff have been trained in the use of the restrictive practices contained within the plan. I'm just wondering if maybe we come back for a review um, and check in in a couple of months and see where we're at. Yeah, it's a great idea. Ongoing reviews of the decisions by the panel ensures the person's situation is assessed properly to determine whether the approved restrictive practices are addressing the behaviours of concern as originally intended. And you probably noticed that I've been taking notes over the course of today. Mm -hmm. um, I've been building an outcome summary. This will be something that Cindy will need to sign off on, but it'll be something that you can print out and have on record at the service so that you can implement with Peter some of the recommendations that um, we've put in place as part of our summary. Is there any capacity for Jessica to come along in a couple of months? She did express an interest to come to the panel next time. So I guess in 12 months environmental restraint, yep. two months review to check in and with Pete and the update on the BSB, uh, and a very polite decline on the uh, PRN for the moment. And uh, we'll see you in two months and see how things are going. All righty then. Great. And hopefully Jessica will be here. Awesome. Okay. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, Thank you. Joe. After the RPA panel has outlined its decisions, updating the person on the outcome of the meeting is an essential part of the RPA process. Hey Jessica, how are you? Pretty good, thanks. Remember I had to go to the panel yesterday? Yes, what happened? Well, we talked all about you and Peter talked as well. And they asked lots of questions about how we're supporting you. Peter's going to develop what we call a social story for us to help you when you get upset. So the panel made a decision not to approve the medication, but they did approve the locking of the fridge and the cupboard. I just like to eat what I want. So they will give you access to the food when you want it, but we will make sure you access safe food and that you're safe and you don't choke. So we've got a plan and we've got some strategies we're going to work on. So we'll keep talking about these as we go along. The panel knows that you want to make your own choices about your food. So we're going to review the practice in two months. How do you feel about that? I can't say I like it, but I'll give it a go for two months. I don't want to go back to hospital. Would you like to come to the panel in a couple of months to talk to them? I think I will come with you next time. An outcome summary and authorisation of any decisions is distributed to all key stakeholders and uploaded to the NDIS Quality and Safeguards Commission portal. As you have seen in Jessica's story, the restrictive practices process aims to address any behaviours of concern with strategies that have the least impact on the human rights of the person. For more information on the process or any further detail, please visit our website at the link shown.